Hello, I'm Joshua Carr. Today I'd like to talk to you about building an interest-only period into an amortization schedule and also adjusting the number of periods to account for the interest-only period. In my last video about this topic, part one of two, I built in an interest-only period and I said that it would run for three months. But I also mentioned in passing that one of the challenges was that if you had a 300-month number of periods and then you put in a three-month interest only period, the way this one was designed was that it would get messed up. It wouldn't run to 300 months properly. It would get to 300 months and not understand that you already had th three months of interest only. And since it was still amortizing on a 300 month schedule, well, to make a long story short, it wouldn't work right. Again, because in the real world, most lenders will say, if I give you a three month interest only period, then the rest of the model has to amortize over the remaining 297 months. That's why on this model, if I go all the way down to month 300, we should see that there's a remaining balance that there, there is. So we'd like to get rid of that. We'd like to have this be at zero in month 300. So how do we do that? It's a little tricky. Nothing we can't handle. Basically, I take a look at this function, and what I need to do is I need to say, in the payment calculation, I'm going to adjust the number of periods to take into account whether or not there was an interest-only period or not. In other words, I'm going to put an if inside of an if. So I go here and I throw in another if function, and I say, if there's an interest-only period, then the number of periods that we're amortizing over will be adjusted by the interest only period and if not we're going to just do the number of periods as we were before I then have to throw some dollar signs on here I'm going to fix the location of the interest only toggle fix the location of how long the IO period is fix the location of the number of periods and what this should do is it should say if there's an interest only period and there's a payment calculation, then adjust the amortization period by the number of months of IO. And if there's not, then just run the same 300 months you were running originally. So I do that. I take this. I copy this down. I paste it. We see the payment change from 771 a month to now 774. And we should see that when I get to month 300, there it is. It's paid off in full. And of course, finish the thought. If I change the I.O. period from three months to six months, we should see the payment change from 774 to now 776. Because again, the longer you make the I.O. period, the greater the payment has to be in the remaining months to cover for the fact that you had an I.O. period. And again, we should see that in month 300, it is fully paid off. Great. Uh, that is how we do an interest only calculation in an AMWORD schedule and adjust the number of periods to account for the interest only period. Uh, if you're interested in more content like this, or if you have any additional suggestions for additional content, please contact me at josh at kahrrealestate.com. My email address is in the upper left-hand corner of the video. Or if you'd like to attend one of my live classes, I run them every six to eight weeks in New York City. If you can't attend in person, you can always attend it as a webinar. I also deliver classes on-site for corporations and universities throughout the world. You can read more about it on my website at kahrrealestate.com. Again, the web address is in the upper left-hand corner. Thanks again and keep on building better models.